Greetings listener. Today I would like to give you a good overview, about all kinds of races in Merlin. You might already have heard of some, but maybe not from all. So I hope I can tell you something new. To start, I would like to talk about my personal favorite. The Vila and the Shivara. The Vila and Shivara of the Alvaran clade, have lived on the remote continent of Ermathar for as long as history recalls, although, the name actually means new jungle lands. The Shivara have a settlement in Toxai, but except for the relations with the Kurits, they have very little contact with other human races. Many Shivara have abandoned the nomadic lifestyle of the Vila, and now live in permanent, sophisticated cave complexes. The Vila and Shivara are an animistic society, which fears and seeks to control Anam, the spirits of nature, who are believed to be present in all things. The Shiva are known for their power to shape inorganic matter. However, the constituents of this ability remain a mystery to most outsiders. Because of their enigmatic culture and foreign visage, human civilizations tend to regard them with suspicion although their skills in stone, and gem crafting, are highly valued. The Vila on the other hand, live as hunter-gatherers, and generally group in complex patterns of non-permanent tribes. The tribes often have an underground counterpart among the Shivara. Adapted to survival in the jungle-like environments, and caves of Ermathar, the Vila and Shivara are small, lean, and incredibly agile people with exceptional mental and sensory awareness. The Sardukan Below the equator to the southwest, lies the arid desert-covered continent, called Sarduka. Scattered among the sands are the lush oases, which provide homes for the Sardukan people. In the past the Sardukans have withstood incursions by both Tintramines and Callards, but the nations are now at peace. Sarduka is divided into provinces called Sepets. While some of these are autonomous, the invasions urged many of the Sepets to unite under the rule of the Sardukan Empire. Today, Empyrean rule is characterized by technological and agricultural developments that drive ambitious urban planning. Cultural wisdom teaches that the desert is a living entity and the Sardukans easily accept many of the strange phenomena that can be observed among its dunes. This mythos has shaped the Sardukans' natural affinity for philosophy and magic, traits which are molded by a powerful Magi priesthood. The Calard The Calardian continent of Nordveld is a place of magnificent mountains and bitter cold. Once this realm was home to many warmongering clans, but history tells of their consolidation under one chieftain, to fight the invasion of the Tindremic forces. Many years have passed, and although there has been a truce between the two peoples since the conflux, it is an uneasy peace. Throughout history, the Callards and Blaine have been allies. The two races live together in relatively autonomous clans, ruled by Hubdings, which are part of larger regions called lands. Important decisions are made in assemblies called tings, where every free man has the right to vote. The harsh conditions of this northern realm have fostered a tall and physically strong race in the Callards. Though not as physically or mentally dexterous as other races, they have a strength of will that is unmatched. The Sidoian at some point deep in the mists of prehistory, one of Nave's continents sank into the ocean, carrying with it the entire Shinarian civilization. Today only their slave race, the Sidoians, remain. They have long roamed the earth, searching for remnants of their former master's knowledge. The majority of Sidoians are wanderers and explorers. They only make pilgrimage home to Sidoia a few times in their lives, to share their discoveries. Divided into workers and philosophers, their culture revolves heavily around the mathematical and geometric skills they use in their quest for lost knowledge. These talented nomads 
often sell their services as teachers and craftsmen. The meticulous dogmas of Sidoian society have resulted in a racial inclination towards logic, reasoning, and sagacity. Despite their intellectual skills, they are powerful people who value raw strength and endurance over physical agility. The Hargar. When their alliance with the Tindremic Empire fractured, most Hargar families chose to withdraw from the outside world to the safety and seclusion of their stronghold Galbarag, deep within the Talos Mountains. Little is known about the true Hargar. Those who remain outside have adapted and assimilated. They continue to worship Ogma, goddess of stone and metals. Whom they see as the creator of the Ogmir clay. Belief is that her blood runs through the rocks in the form of ichor. This liquid metal, used in a number of rituals, constitutes a fundamental part of Hargar religion. The people almost seem to have a physical need for it. Their small stature, dense bone structure, and heavy physique suit their nature as cave dwellers, or is perhaps a result of it. Centuries of exposure to ichor has both blessed and cursed them. Their tough reddish skin and exceptional night vision comes at the cost of skin diseases and light sensitivity. Human societies perceive them as introverted, but their sense of logic is unmatched. The Blaine. The Blaine race is the youngest of the Ogmir clade. At some point in history they separated from their Hargar ancestors and settled in the cold mountains of Nordveld, merging their lives and cultures with the native Kalards. As centuries passed, and their use of Iker declined, they began to change and adapt to their new climate and culture. The two races now exist together, living in the same clans and at times even in the same households. The Blaine enjoy all the respect rights and privileges granted to all Kalard people, including the right to vote during Tings. They have not completely abandoned their origins though, and prefer to live in mountainous regions with rich ore and sturdy housing. The Blaine have retained much of their Hargar ancestry in their muscular physique, dense bone structure, social introversion, and aptitude for logic. They have grown slightly taller than their forefathers, and developed thick body hair to protect them from the cold. The lack of Iker usage has resulted in more delicate, pale, bluish skin, and they suffer less from the inherent diseases that plague their ancestors. The Tindramine The Tindramines are renowned for their history as conquerors. Before the conflux, the Tindremic Empire dominated large parts of the known world with outposts in every corner of the realm. Those days of glory are over, but the Tindramines still regard themselves as the finest, most advanced civilization in the world. The Tindremic society uses a complicated caste system that envelops every man and every woman born or assimilated into the empire, but only pure-blooded Tindramines are allowed in the higher castes. Because the empire has several academies, and each free citizen is expected to have at least one year of education, Tindremic society has a high degree of literacy. The rich nutritional resources available in a comfortable climate have coupled with the high standard of living in a well-developed society. These factors have led to a Tindremic bloodline, which favors intellectual superiority over lesser physical traits. The Thurser the product of the tragic union between Rizur and human is called a Thurser, an offspring of crimes committed in the wake of battle. Mothers of both races frequently abandon their bastard children to be raised in squalor and exploited as slaves. Because the prejudices of society deprive them of honorable means of survival, many Thurser are forced to turn to violence. These circumstances only serve to reinforce society's view of them as brutish criminals. A few Thurser have forsaken the civilized world and joined together, forming passive communities in an attempt to avoid the torments of suspicion and discrimination. 
The Thurser possess traits that exceed both of their races of origin. From the Rizzer, they inherit strength and fortitude, which are enhanced by human intelligence. Their naturally quick healing enables them to survive their youth and hone their reflexes and cunning to a fearsome level. The Kurits The ancient Kurits have long endured as nomadic hunters and herdsmen. Living closely with their herds, they are among the best horsemen in the world. These fierce, nomadic people identify themselves by tribe, rather than race. And tribal wars are common. Morinkur is the only permanent Kurit settlement, and the only place of peace between the tribes. Each fourth year, the tribes converge to exchange goods, wedding vows and stories. Although Morinkur considers the Tindremic Empire its ally, there are suspicions that emissaries of the empire, are actively sowing seeds of conflict between the tribes. Adapted to survival on the steppes, the Kurit are small, lean, muscular people with almond eyes and ruddy skin. Acclimated to life in harsh environments, they have been known to lead their herds where even callards refuse to venture. That was my short overview about some of Merlan's races. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, leave a like. If you want to know more about the game, visit www.mortalonline2.com or subscribe to our channel for more Mortal Online 2 content.